It's that time. FM23 is here and that means so is our annual head coach story. We are back with our unemployed journeyman who's going to work under a director of football model at every club. But which country and what club is going to give us our first chance in management? There's only one way to find out. Let's go and do it. The only way we know how with a job hunt. Let's get cracking. Yes, hello and welcome along to part one of the FM23 edition of The Head Coach. We are back as an unemployed journeyman and I can prove with no experience and no coaching badges. And we are here to try and get to the very top of football with a manager starting from nothing. So if you're looking forward to that, we'll go through all the rules and the plans in a moment. Then please do put a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to stay up to date with this story every single day. Our build a nation will be starting tomorrow and we'll be on Twitch daily too. So this is going to be busy. But the rules of the head coach are very simple. We come here, look for the most realistic job, try and get ourselves on the ladder by any means possible. And then we work our way through the divisions. But there's a caveat to this normal journeyman story. We must work under the director of football model. We will have no say in transfer staffing or contracts. We cannot make a bid for a player. We cannot renew a contract. We cannot search for a staff member. All we are doing is working as a coach and hoping that whoever's in charge of recruitment does a good job for us. So hopefully you're looking forward to all of that. We are here on the home screen on the first day of pre-season. And we're going to try and get ourselves a job. And then hopefully, by the end of this episode, we can meet our new team and our new staff that we're going to be working with. I've got a couple of points of interest here as well. I've loaded nearly every European league and a few others from around the world. So the likes of India, Uruguay. We've got one from virtually every continent. But the jobs coming up that look realistic at the moment. Airbus from Wales. East Fife from Scotland. And St. Albans and Concord in the National League South. St Albans is very local to me, probably one of my most local clubs in that division. It'd be really interesting if we could get that job. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply for all jobs, holiday till we get interviews, and then we will be back in a moment to see who's willing to give us a chance. Fingers crossed it won't take long. And at last, after a lot of nail biting and a lot of very small clubs on paper reputation wise turning us down, we have got two job interviews. However, I won't be going to Scotland or the most local option because among the many across Europe to reject us are St Albans and East Fife. However, Airbus in Wales have offered us a job interview and Concord in the National League South have offered us a job interview. How will we get on? Let's start with Concord because on paper it's the bigger job, it's the one I'd go for first. So let's attend the interview and see how we get on. We've invited you along today so we can put forward our vision for the club. Let's go. It's great to be here. Let's get started. That question is the same. I am willing to forge a career by any means necessary. We want to share our vision for the future. That seems very quick and forward of you. Grow the club's reputation. Become an established National League South team. And this is important. If we want to avoid early sackings, we want a realistic club. Be competitive in everything else. Top half finish second year, third year playoffs. I think that's a very solid starting point. So let's agree to that. If given the job, I feel we could avoid a relegation battle or I think we could do slightly better and finish mid-table. I'm not making that mistake when I'm not in charge of recruitment. Let's just say we're happy. We don't want to get sacked and have to start all over again. So let's try and be pragmatic. I'll be happy to work with the normal wage budget, which is six grand a week. Not an awful lot. Is there anything you'd like to ask ahead of potentially getting it? Not at all. That is a very short interview by normal FM standards. I'm a little bit worried they're not really considering us that much. Let's see if the Airbus one is any different. It's exactly the same starting point, so let's get started. I'm doing whatever I can to keep progressing. There's no lie in that. Let's see what the vision is again. Avoid relegation. Oh, attempt to avoid relegation. So this must be the club expected to finish 12th. No problem with that whatsoever. They haven't got a lot of ambition. But remember, we started last year at Kef and Druids and we just got stuck there for a few years. 
but if it's the only job going, we'll probably have to take it. We'll agree we'll try and battle against relegation. We'll agree we'll work with the three grand a week wage budget. No, two and a half. The transfer budget was three grand. I got a bit too over optimistic there. We've got no request to propose. We're through the interview. Now, can one of you please, ideally Concord, go and offer us a job? Well, then, we've got a job offer. It comes from Airbus, probably our second choice of the two. But there are some other jobs popping up and we haven't yet been rejected by Concord. So we're going to stick with it for a week. We're going to try and delay it. I noticed the club in Finland, who we had an interview at last year, they've popped up as well. But let's go and delay this for one week. And if we don't get offered the job by Concord, it looks like we're off to Wales again. Wow, that's a pretty bitter pill to swallow. We have lost out on a job to Steve Claridge, who has gone to Concord Rangers as manager. And that means with no other clubs offering us an interview, not even shortlisting us for the roles, that we are going to Wales for Airbus UK Broughton, the worst team in the Welsh Premier League on paper. They've offered us £180 a week, a two and a half grand a week wage budget. Well, not quite. So let's start the negotiations and take our first job. I think it's going to be a bit of a slog this year, isn't it? Let's try and get up to 200 quid a week, cover some of the train costs that we've got to travel and suggest the terms. It's only a one year deal, but they've agreed it. So we've managed to get another couple of hundred quid. Now let's go and get into it, go and meet the staff and meet the players in our first job. And here we are, Airbus UK have appointed us as manager, an inexperienced 29 year old. Let's go and see what standard we've got. I guess at least with Kef and Druids last year, we've got something to compare it to. And in fact, the media prediction's only 11th. They were promoted from the North last year, but they're not expected to be bottom. We've got a one and a half thousand capacity stadium, pretty poor facilities, although the youth ones, not too bad by Welsh Prem standards. There is a technical director and an assistant manager in place already. We'll go and have a little nose at them in a minute. I'm resisting. Through we go. They're recommending a diamond. You know my bias as a Luton fan over recent years. That is not a bad tactic at all. We've got to be competitive in the Cups. Attempt to avoid relegation. I mean, it's reasonable. We can't really fail here. But it is going to be very hard to increase our reputation and move on to that next level. So let's go and get into our first day at the job. We get to see the new supporter profile as well. I can't imagine there's much here. There's a couple of loan offers out going on already, but we're not going to have a say in that. So the supporter profile, 7% hardcore, 30% court and family, and then a few casuals. Yeah, it's, it's not particularly good, is it? Let's be brutally honest. The season expectations, we know exactly what they are. We're going to stick with the lowest. We're going to be very, very cautious this season. The tactical direction will store out after looking at the squad. Let's see what tactic we want to play. But first, what staff we're going to be working with. There are five members of the coaching staff, including myself, one recruitment team member, that really doesn't bode well, and one physio. So we're a little bit light in some of the areas I could really do with help. Let's have a look at the ones that are here, though. We start with technical director Lee Starkey, who at the moment is going to be the most important man to my summer. What's he like? He's absolutely horrendous. Three for judging ability and potential, four for negotiating. I mean, he's actually a better youth coach, but technical director he is. We could do with a director of football quick. Of course, we'll set everyone to go and get them people in. Mark Allen is assistant manager. He is on 150 quid a week. His people management is the worst possible. That doesn't bode well for someone who I'm going to be a bit reliant on. He is a disciplinarian. He's been at Airbus a long time. So hopefully we can chuck him in front of the fans if things go wrong. Of course, this is a part-time club. There's nothing professional here. Let's have a look at the only senior coach or dedicated coach, I should say. Jason Doggett is poor, but good working with youngsters. So not the worst combination we could have. And a former Kef and Druids player. So a little bit of a link to last year's start there. In terms of a player coach, we've got Jamie Crowther. Now we won't look at his playing attributes straight away. He's a very, very poor coach yet again. We've got a head performance analyst from Portugal who's not very good. We've got a head physio in Ritson Lloyd who is very good. Ah, came from Swansea. So we've got an excellent physio. That's the one thing we can take as a positive. We should be able to keep people fit and get them back quicker. Rick Chapman is the under-19s manager. He's absolutely awful bar working with youngsters. 
So there's a lot left to be desired there, isn't there? No recruitment team as such, and the one person in is useless. The coaching team's rubbish. The assistant can't deal with people. But we've got a great medical department. A department of one person who's earning double my wage a week, and rightly so, based on his attributes. Let's go and have a quick look at the youth teams in case there's anyone in there that might be worth a first team look. Absolutely not. Not even a single gold star of current ability. So let's go and get through to the squad. We will have a look at the squad planner in a bit more detail later on. But let's start by looking at the reports for these guys and who might even be able to compete at this level. And here we go. It seems that we've got three or four bits of quality dotted throughout the squad. One of them's injured. One of them I recognise, I think from the banger save in FM21. And one of them I recognise from Northern Ireland, I think, who looks a decent player. However, there's not much quality and there certainly isn't much depth. So let's start in goal. We've got three keepers. The best is a 21-year-old in Lewis Dutton with two and a half star ability, five star potential, handling four, positioning four, agility six, concentration six. Oh, Jesus. This is pretty bad, isn't it? Not a great personality. Not really going to develop. I hate defensive players with poor positioning. Regulars will know that. Unfortunately, he's another one of those. Let's see what the more experienced keeper is like. One and a half star ability Mike Jones. I mean, he's got a bit more balance. One more on the positioning. His anticipation's okay. But he's got a one for composure, which isn't ideal for a keeper, I guess. I mean, it's much of a muchness, isn't it? There's one star between them, but they're both awful. And then 19-year-old Matthew Busby. Three for positioning. It gets even worse. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Let's move into the fence where we have got one of the best players at the club. Looks like our right wing is going to be incredibly potent. So Steve Thomason is five-star ability by this squad. I'm sure we had him at Bangor in FM21. He is, ah, oh, he's rock solid. Really rock solid. Has played for Wrexham, Tamworth, and now for years for Airbus. He's a really good player. A natural centre-half can cover right back. We're going to get him in the middle of our defence because we need someone solid in there. If we can get 11 players like him, we've got one hell of a chance. As it is, I think we'll enjoy him for one year and then he'll probably get moved on. In terms of competition for him, it probably doesn't look that great. We've got three-star ability reward Wakona. He has got four and a half star potential and he's got some solid core attributes. I'll remember to change the height and the weight and I will change the attribute wheel next time as well. So don't panic if you're looking at this. But he is six for jumping reach, six for strength. He's played in England and Northern Ireland. So in fact, let me get the attribute wheel up and see what he actually looks like. Pretty awful, I'd say. I mean, he's fairly quick. He's pretty good defensively in the core attributes and he's got good positioning. His mental stats are generally awful though. And I hate a center half who can't jump. So even though he's six foot one, he doesn't seem to have a leap. This might be a bit of an issue. However, there is one player rated better than him. That man is a 38-year-old where I'm guessing the pace might not quite be there. It's Gareth Edwards. Now, he's not as slow as I thought he'd be. I have changed to feet because now I've noticed it. It's doing my head in. He's a little bit on the older side and he's not the quickest. I don't know what we do with that. Do we go for the quick centre half? I guess the match engine's going to dictate. Do we even get to test the low block with this club? It might well be the right candidate looking at the players so far. Not a great player. And to be honest... For those two, unless we maybe go for a back three, I'm not sure which one we go for because the fullbacks don't look any better, do they? Let's start with Dan Roberts, though, another centre half, 22 years of age, two strength, two strength for a central defender, not the best technically, no attribute in double figures, composure and concentration are awful, anticipation's not far off. Yeah, he's not going to be starting any games for us. Billy Nicholas, not even got a proper star of ability. He's a left back with no stamina. He's not got positioning. He can't mark. He can't cross. Oh dear. I am. This is worse than Kef and Druid squad, isn't it? I know it was a long time ago and maybe I'm remembering it better than it was. I'm sure Kef and Druid's had a better squad than this on paper. Owen Payne is the other left back. He's a bit better overall, but he's not the quickest. And again, his stamina's awful, but at least he's got positioning. At least he can tackle. And his decision making is exceptional in spite of many of his other attributes. So he'd probably be the one to get the nod at left back. In terms of the other defensive players, we've got Jamie Crowther. 
who is a centre-half and holding midfielder. Now, he can't run, so he can't play centre-half. And for a six-footer, he's terrible in the air. However, he's got great position in tackling, and he's got good stamina and natural fitness. So I'm thinking, if we can find a tactic with a holding midfielder, he might suit that pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with him. He's obviously a terrible coach, but he might be a quite useful player for us yet. Joe Palmer is another one listed as a centre-half. One and a half ability, four-star potential. Actually a natural holding mid and centre midfielder. He's one of those who you chuck on the bench and can fill in a few positions, but I wouldn't like him to be starting. And given the size of the squad, I'm a bit worried we're not going to have many improvements at the start of the season either. Jake Phillips is listed as a right midfielder, and from what I've seen so far, I kind of need him to be able to play right back, don't I? Let's see what he's like. Two-star ability, three-star potential. Ah, he's a natural left back. Can play right back, he's right-footed, and can play on either wing or centre midfield. So, bit of a jack-of-all trades. But overall, he's not awful at anything. He's not good at anything, bar a long throw, which might come in handy. But he's not awful, so he could yet be our right-back first choice. And given the fact he's right-footed, I think that would suit us better. So potentially that solves a problem, allows us to play Thomason, the best central defender at centre-half, and give us a little bit of a better chance in the spine of the team. So I'm not devastated by that one. Let's move into midfield. We've got Ryan Edwards, four-star ability. He is a former Bangor City player, I thought so. Very decent technician. Still got enough physically, maybe not the best natural fitness, but he's determined, he's a good leader, be a good player for mentoring groups as well. I think he's pretty good. I'm not sure I'll use him as a box-to-box, -box, but if I can get him in as one of my technical players, I think he could be quite useful. I'm not too disappointed with him. After him is a lone player who's got no real stars of ability. He is on loan from TNS. I think he's all right, to be honest. He's a runner, isn't he? He's got nothing technically, but mentally he's okay, and physically he can go all day. So I think Bo Cornish might be someone who features in the squad a bit, but probably mainly off the bench or filling in when one or two need a rest in midweek games, for example. Nearly there now, but most of the rest are strikers, which is a bit of a concern. On to the remaining midfielders, we've got Oliver Lansley, who is one and a half star ability, three and a half star potential. I mean, he can run, and he is a natural striker, which is another concern for us. He can't finish. He's quick. He can dribble a bit. He's got an okay first touch. I wouldn't like to worry about the rest of his game. So I think, if anything, we'd probably use him as a winger because I don't fancy him up front, I've got to be honest. No balance either, which is a problem for an advance forward. Craig Curran, though, is the joint best player at the club. 32 years of age. He's listed as a right winger. I'm sure he can play centre mid too. Is it the one I'm thinking of? It is. The one who played in England, has played in Scotland and has played for Connors Key. He's a really good player. He can play up front. He can play off both wings. I kind of see him maybe playing in that sort of target man or deeper forward role, even though he's not the tallest. He's got a good personality. He's really good technically. Do I even play him as a number 10, try and get him running in behind? Maybe cutting in off the left? I'm not sure. But he's a player I like. So we've got some real quality there in him and Thomason. I just need a good director of football to give us more players like that. Jake Eyre is a three-star striker. He is only a striker and he's not the best. He can't really finish, but he's quick, he's composed and there's worse finishing attributes out there. So he'll probably get more football than I'd like him to. He's actually rated three-star by the comparison of our squad, which tells you all you need to know about it. And considering our best striker is injured down there, I hope it's not a long one. It's going to be pretty difficult for Eyre to be displaced by any of the rest because they're all rated terribly. You've got George Piers, who's one and a half star ability, four and a half potential. Hmm, not the worst finisher. He's actually okay technically, but he's not composed and he's not tall, can't jump, isn't strong. I don't really know what he is as a striker. Maybe as a poacher or advance forward again, can do a job off the bench. He seems to have an okay goal record, but he's not the sort of person I want to be relying on. And looking at how many young strikers we've got at the club, you have to hope some of these that are loan listed get an offer because the squad's just too big otherwise. Let's move on to the injured one though, Adam Davis. How bad is the injury? I'm not even going to look first. Four and a half star ability. Two to three months. I thought it was going to be worse. Brilliant determination. Scored more than one a game last season as they got promoted. 
He's a good finisher. He's got a great jump in reach. He's six foot five. All set pieces are coming into play. I like him. If we can get him fit quick enough and stay in the mix till then, he's going to be so, so key for this football club. Fingers crossed we can get him back soon. Let's get through the rest of the dross at the bottom according to star ability. Mamudo Darbo, one star ability. He is not rated very well. Can't finish, can't head. Six foot six though. So maybe another option off the bench for set pieces. Finn Savage is loan listed. He's one star ability, four potential. Now see, actually I quite like him. I know he's not got the best mental attributes, but he can finish, head the ball. He's six foot and he can run. His off the ball movement's not the worst. He's fairly determined. He's going to get more football than his attributes would suggest and his star ability would suggest because I think he's the type of player that can score goals. Hasn't yet played a league game for the club apparently. We'll be changing that this season. On to the final two. We've got Cameron Ramsey who looks like he's on his way out. He's another one who's not the worst finisher actually but not as quick, not as composed, not as good off the ball. In fact, he's pretty awful off the ball. And at 5 foot 10 with no jump in reach, he's not going to be a part of my plans. And then finally, we've got Mike Burke, one star ability, three and a half, no, four and a half potential. He's all right. Again, he's pretty balanced. He's not got any stamina or strength. But in terms of key attributes, I mean, you could do a lot worse. You really could. So he might feature a little bit. The problem I've got here, and hopefully you can help me down in the comments, is what on earth do we go for in terms of tactic? What do I even begin to look at? We've got three good centre halves and no good fullbacks. We've got a couple of centre mids, one good winger, one good striker who's out injured. I don't even begin to know what tactic to play. I think looking at Crowther, it's probably got to be something with a holding midfielder. So maybe I'm looking at a 4 3 3 to be a little bit more cautious. But then looking at Aaron Davis, do I need to get two players up front when we're fully fit to try and take advantage? Or could I play air off the left-hand side? I'm not sure. Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments. What you think of our first club? What you think of the team and the squad we've got to work with? We're going to go and set all the responsibilities, get a director of football in. The chairman will be in charge of that. And all the other stuff will be done by the technical director. And then fingers crossed, we will be back for the first game of the season. We'll ignore the League Cup tie. Or in fact, we might do that in the first league game. That's at home to Avarisworth. Let's see what players we've got in when we get to that point. I'd imagine staffing will be the first priority. But we have no say in it. It's all up to our staff now. We've just got to get the best out of a pretty average group of players. We'll finish off by seeing where we're expected to finish in the league. And then we'll compare it to what happens once we've had the summer transfer window. We are expected by the media to finish 12th. Bottom of the league. Pontypreed, the other promoted side, expect more. And Cardiff Met Uni expect much more. The odds would suggest this is going to be a hard task. And the squad doesn't really do much to disagree with that, does it? So let me know what you think about our upcoming season. Will we avoid a sacking in our first job? If you're looking forward to finding out and you did enjoy this introduction, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe for daily content from this series and our build a nation from distillery in Northern Ireland. That one will start tomorrow at half 11 and it will be there every day throughout the beta as will this one at 3.30 p.m. You can find daily streams on Twitch. The link is up in the eye above as well as some other playlists and FM23 save ideas. All the links to other platforms and ways to support the channel down in the description below. But thank you for coming along to our introduction to the head coach. What do we think of our first job? I'm not particularly optimistic but let's hope we can prove people wrong. Above my head now are some of my FM23 save ideas. Please do give them a go. And I'll see you back here tomorrow at 3.30 for our first game with Airbus UK.